Hey guys, Steve from PC Budget Solutions here, and I just learned a lot from this experiment. I hope I can teach you guys a lot and not make the same mistakes I did, but the Q6600 system that I built to try to bring this video to you, look at the title, it's not what you guys were expecting, but I ran into two issues. A, first of all, a P35 board does not support SLI because it's an Intel chipset. You need an NVIDIA chipset. Second problem, Stupid me, I should have found this one out. 9800 GTs, even with the rebadged GTS 250s, are DirectX 10 only. So if the game does not support DirectX 10, not going to work. So let's throw all of this, well, not all of it, just the two cards here. Let's take them off the test bench and let's go a completely different route. So this is the route we're going to go on. You have one of those 9800 GTs. You have 8 gigs of RAM, Q6600 with a good cooler. You have all that already. Good. You have two hundred dollars to be able to play newer games. Well, the two hundred dollars is going to get you on the new market a G forty five sixty, which is, an, is a really good chip. Don't get me wrong, eight gigs RAM and a board, but you still be able to play the games. And the integrated GPU just isn't going to cut it. So let's try a different route. Enter the RX four eighty. Let's slap this bad boy into this system. Overclock the Q sixty six hundred, which is already done. So we're good there. And I don't know what's going to happen. You guys probably don't know what's going to happen. So I invite you guys, let's find out together. And let's see indeed what happens. So I have a test system here to show you guys kind of a head-to-head -head comparison. You guys have seen one of the very first systems that I sold to the open market, the Athlon 2 X4 760 CPU. Didn't do too bad, but compared to what's currently available, not the best, but it's a really, really good test system to put against a Core 2 Quad. Now, these aren't the entire specs and settings that I set up, but some of the key points. The Q6600 was overclocked to uh, 3.2 gigahertz from 2.4. I ended up at 1.415 volts, but it actually showed about 1.36 in CPU-Z. That's very common in the older systems. The motherboard, which does not support SLI, is an 8-bit P35 motherboard. I overclocked the memory to 800 megahertz with the following timings versus the Athlon system. I kept it stock just because I wasn't really trying to mess with that. I did overclock the memory, set up the timings, and we have the RX 480. So that is kind of what we're up against. Let's take a look at some benchmarks, shall we? So in Rise of the Tomb Raider, high settings 1080p, clearly the RX 480 carried the CPU quite a bit. Now, when looking at some of the lows, and I don't have them on this particular chart, some of the lows were a bit low, but the overall experience wasn't bad, averaging about 47 FPS right around there. You turn it down to low or medium, and you'll have really enjoyable frame rate. Probably enough to get you to your next overall, you know, overhaul upgrade rather. But let's keep going. Let's take a look at Ghost Recon Wildlands. I don't usually do minimum, maximum, and average, but I'm going to do it for this test and the next test to try to paint the picture of what the experience looked like. On high settings at 1080p, we're looking at about 28 FPS and about 35 to 36 FPS average. Not very playable in my opinion. If you turn it down to lower medium, you'll get a much better experience. The CPUs were definitely the bottleneck in this situation, when especially when comparing to the i5 system that posted much higher frame rates. But let's take a look at For Honor and see how that played out. So this doesn't even tell the entire picture. So obviously there's a lot more of uh, really low and really high FPS on the Q6600. What you don't see on the graph is anytime there's a lot of CPU bound things going on, so you had a lot of fighters and everything attacking each other at once, the frame rate dips it dipped into the 30s and 40s, but at 1080p high settings, that's actually not bad. With the lowest of the low being more of an outlier, I was experiencing the 30s to 40s on the low end, and the graphical intense was up over 100. I would go to say Four Honors a really big game. You could nurse this CPU for a while until you have the funds to get you know, another setup. But then there came Ashes of the Singularity. I really hate to end this video on a bad note, but on DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, neither CPU did particularly well. The Q6600 on DirectX 12 only managed to average about 
18 and 19 FPS. And even the Athlon didn't even quite hit 30 on average. The frame rates really weren't that well. It was on standard settings. Low probably wouldn't make much of a difference. If you were going to play this game, I would almost recommend maybe an iGPU on like an i3 system would probably do a little bit better just because of how CPU intensive Ashes of the Singularity is. Now, this is really the only benchmark that really kind of felt this way that did that poorly. And given the fact that it's kind of like the end all be all benchmark, it really doesn't surprise me that neither one of these systems did that well. But I think we're kind of getting the whole story coming together here. So let's see what the final thoughts are. Let's see what the purpose of this video was. So conclusion time. Why did I do this video? Well, because I spent a lot of money on this setup. Not a lot, but I could have definitely bought other things like an RX 580 for what I spent. But I spent money on a setup, so I had to do something with it. But I think this might answer the question. I don't think any of you guys are rocking a Q6 and 600 your main rig. You might be rocking an i7-920 or a second gen i7 or whatever, but I think this video hits a lot of different facets of what I was trying to prove. And that is with older hardware, with some overclocking, if you're a seasoned veteran and feel comfortable doing, doing that, a newer graphics card can kind of get you by, especially a card like this, really good value by the way, but it can get you by until you make a complete overhaul of the system. So unless you're doing really CPU bound tasks where your CPU is falling on its face and no amount of overclocking is going to help the system over here, that AMD system, I think this video really holds up to what I was trying to bring to you guys, which was a video card can bring, bring alive an older system almost as much as an SSD. So. I really, really hope you guys liked it. I really do. I put a lot of time, money, and effort into this to try to bring some to you. But if you don't, it's cool. That'll tell me that I wasted your guys' time, maybe, and you guys want to go with different content. I definitely understand that. Subscribe to the video. You can see where I got the video card, the power supply, and a couple other things. I got it uh, off of Amazon. There's links in the description below where you guys can purchase that stuff. It helps me out a lot. But... This is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I promise not to throw away more money here down the road. I promise. Last time, I hope. But I will see you guys later on down the road.